Hello, my name's Laura Murphy from MTC2 Limited and I'm a business consultant, facilitator, trainer and executive coach and I specialise in Nancy Klein's thinking environment and time to think. And I want to very briefly um, cover the 10 components that make up the thinking environment. I'm saying briefly because each one you can go into in quite some depth. Um, but that would probably take this little video clip to an hour and a half or two hours. So I'm just going to stick with a very brief introduction. So um, I'll be issuing them as a, as a list, but actually they're not a, a hierarchy. Um, they combine together to form a system um, which enables a thinking environment to occur. So the first one is attention. And that's where we pay full attention to the person that's thinking with respect and importantly without interruption because it's the interruption that inhibits thinking and our sole purpose when we're paying attention is to be really curious about where that thinking is taking somebody. Then we have equality. So with equality we treat each other as peers in our thinking everybody's thinking is as equal as everybody else's and as valuable as everybody else's. We give equal turns and equal attention and equal time to each other. There's ease. That ease within ourselves and within the uh, thinker that's opposite where we offer the freedom from internal rush or urgency. And there's a whole skill base around generating that sense of ease. Appreciation is an important component too, where we offer a genuine acknowledgement of a person's qualities. And we know that for every criticism of somebody, it takes um, five items of appreciation to bring back the equilibrium in a person's physiology. So appreciation is an important item. Encouragement. So, um, the encouragement there is to help people go beyond what they thought their thinking was possible before. To give them the courage to go to the very edge of their thinking and then go even further than that. So the encouragement to do away with any internal competition um, or maybe that thought's not as good as the thought I had before or I can think even better it's around um, going beyond that. Feelings. Now that's a biggie. We know that when you inhibit feelings, when you, when you try and contain them, that that inhibits your thinking. And so it's, it's around allowing a sufficient emotional release to restore the thinking, to restore the ability to think um, generatively, to ignite the thinking we have information um, and that's around supplying the facts. The, the information that we have all around us that, that contributes to our, our thinking and the assumptions that we make about things and, um, and challenging ourselves to maybe think, well, is this actually correct? Um, is this something that I've just embedded within myself and I'm not going to, to um, challenge what that is. So is the information, is the data that we're gathering, that, that we're thinking about, is, is that correct? And then diversity. So I mean, we talk about equality and diversity with different hats on, but this diversity is around, um, yes, the diverse ethnicities are around and the diverse experiences that we've had, but also um, the diverse thinking that we have, the diversity there is within our own thinking and um, when other people are thinking, acknowledging that that will generate a diversity within our own thoughts as, as well. The incisive questions um, and that is around removing assumptions, I mentioned assumptions earlier, but removing those assumptions that limit our, our ability to think clearly and creatively. And then finally there's place. 
and that's about creating a physical environment that says back to people you matter so not having yourself in a grubby little cupboard when you're having a meeting or sitting um, with boxes all the way around you or in a goldfish bowl you know there's these glass offices now it aren't there where you can walk by and you can be distracted by things that are happening outside you're losing that focus within you but there's also the place about where you are emotionally and um, intellectually and cognitively to make sure that that place is right as well so that's the 10 components as I said right at the very beginning they're not a hierarchy no one is better than the other they form this system I like to um, regard it as a cloak I weave them into a cloak that I ha that I put on my shoulders to get me into a thinking environment to be the thinking environment and then I use that cloak to wrap it around the, the other people that are within um, the environment whether that's on a one-to-one -one basis or whether I'm working in organizations with teams and projects so that everybody feels included within the thinking environment and that's where truly generative thinking occurs and you can revolutionize how an organization works and the business processes that it follows so if you want to find out more about the 10 components about the thinking environment and how time to think can help you or your organization then get in touch so that's laura murphy from mtc2 limited making talent count